I did two the two days Look, if we want to have a good surface coming off the mirror, we're going to actually put some straight on here. So part of what we're watching here is we kind of want the pattern of this cloth to come out fairly straight. And actually, if you're doing a performance part, fiber orientation is really important. So if you noticed, I had tape, masking tape around the perimeter of the cloth. And part of the reason for that so it would hold its shape better as we moved it. You notice on that panel there's actually a spot in the corner where the fibers are all screwed up and I taped it this morning. So, a lot of times with wet layup vacuum bagging, you got, with wet layup vacuum bagging you gotta do a good job getting the air out of the laminate. You, it, it will help. It will get some of the excess bubbles out when you put it under vacuum, but it doesn't compensate for doing a poor job to begin with. I did wax the mirror. Now, if it was a bigger panel, we would probably perforate the core on four inch centers so that we wouldn't get any air bubbles locked under it because it's relatively small. Is that, is that a, a vinyl foam core? Yeah, this is P, it's Divinicil PVC. And then we're actually just going to lift the other piece right smack them on here.
when you take the threshold to the side, the carbon can only be pressed this way, and the carbon won't be stuck on this side. So because you have that much difference in thickness, you just swing the whole way so you can just sort of yeah. move it. You want to make it really strong, right? So you can also add it. Mm -hmm. The glass is a little yeah. easier to laminate because you can see through it. Carbon because it's yeah. opaque. You gotta either get some experience or work it a little extra just to make sure you're okay. Which is partly why I painted down epoxy before we put the carbon down. Yeah, if it was thin glass, we'd probably just put the glass down and then wet right through it. No, you I didn't. Take mine off. All right. So pill ply goes down next, and the pill ply provides a link, a weak link, and we can pull this off afterwards. It also will provide a texture surface if we wanted to bond to it. Um, another benefit to pill ply is that if you get it down smooth, any wrinkles that are on top of it. You know, like if you had a wrinkle in the bag, if it was a complex part, or you saw how we had an excess bag in the other one, and any of those wrinkles that get resin in them will come off on top of the pill ply, so you still have a smooth part. <laughs> this right here is a perforated release film. And the reason we use this is so it will allow excess resin to come through into the breather, but it doesn't allow an unlimited amount. So if you put down your pill ply and skip this and then put down your breather, especially in a thin laminate like this, you can actually pull too much resin out and your laminate will be too dry. It won't be strong enough. Um, so this will limit. It will let us get excess out, increase our fiber to resin ratio, but not cause us to be too so weak. Is that going to pull resin from the other side? So 
well, when we put it under pressure, yeah, resin will squirt out through those holes and into this It'll breather. Squirt out from underneath. This one. Yeah. yeah. You want to put it? Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> so what we got here, we're putting two different cups in, and we're doing them on different sides of the bag. This side right here actually will be our our vacuum port. And over here we're going to stick a vacuum gauge and that allows us to make sure that we're pulling vacuum through the whole part. <laughs> Do it at your own risk. He experimented with this, but that one might not be. Well, you're not down over the gorge, that's fine. <laughs> So, we're using quick disconnects on here. When you disconnect these, these actually seal up. Um, Oh, so you can take take the line off and still maintain your yeah. vacuum. If you got a good seal, I actually have had a customer it is. that he'll do that. He'll pull it down and pull it off. Okay. I don't trust. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't but if myself. for some reason you need to pull it off real quick, it's it's convenient. Do that here. Well, if you have the gauge on there, you can yeah. keep an eye on it. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a gauge on. Well, you're going to hear some. Oh, yeah. Alright, alright. So this pump we're using right here is the, pretty much, we have three pumps and they're pretty much equivalent to the amount of vacuum they'll pull. There's a slight difference, but they'll all pull about a full atmosphere. Uh, this pump is the smallest. It only moves in free air. It moves a cubic foot in half a minute. The other ones move so. four and six cubic feet air a minute. That only matters when you're initially pulling the bag down and trying to get all the excess air out. Okay. If you're having a hard time getting the bag down because you got a leak, oh, we got metal. you can take a shot bag and hook it up to the bag, and that will remove a whole lot more air quickly, but it doesn't have the same power. So I'll help you at least get the bag down and they can identify where the leaks are and get them past. So these for big parts, do you use the vacuum? Hey, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Fe- well, look, he's <laughs> <laughs> for 200 yeah, pounds. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> three. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> wow. No, actually. Well, I feel good about myself. Yeah. So that's what a vacuum bag is. You got any questions?